<laughs> well, let's see. Last week we didn't meet in this forum because of the interview with Jody in the UK. So it's good to be back on track because between Dave and I, every conversation we believe we're supposed to have is contact related. That all the evolution that we continue to go through just points to more of that interaction right now. And that's what we need to focus our attention on. Uh, I was, I'm preparing for this conference in May and I've been listening to some of the other participants and it just gave me a perspective that I think I need to share with the others because clearly they have an interest in this content. Some of them have not had experiences yet, but they're ripe for it. My question for them to consider is understanding that our thoughts become things. And that's how we manifest the things in our life. And I can certainly attest to that over the last few years. It's more interesting to me to see what doesn't show up in my life anymore, as opposed to what does, because the does stuff is clearly what I've been spending my attention on. And so when I think about participating in the conferences that I soured on because it seemed to be the same people, and I'm not taking anything away from their experiences. They had them. I can't speak to that. They had them. But unless they're telling me about some evolution in their story, which doesn't seem to be that, they seem to tell the same story about secret space programs and abductions. And again, that shit happened, but it's not where I would suggest you focus your attention right now. If that's what you want to spend your attention on, then I can clearly have you look in the mirror and point to where you're stuck. You clearly have a sensation of some vibrations that are higher than yours, but you have stuck yourself right here every time I hear a reference to when others are talking about they and what they did. It's great to analyze the problem, but I'm solution-oriented to begin with. So you kind of lose my attention if all you want to do is bitch about it and you don't want to talk about, you know, what we can do to improve the situation. That's where my head has been my entire time before this awakening began, solution-oriented. So now, especially when, man... <laughs> I've been waiting for everyone else's awareness to catch up to my own, not understanding mine's continuing to advance. And the experiences I'm having here dimensionally are on the freaking rise, as are they around some of the people that I've been in here. So I can tell that the energy where I am is feeding others rather than just me. But there... Something happened, and I've been hearing from somebody new every day. I've been, <laughs> it wasn't that I didn't pay attention to before, but it didn't seem to be as regular. Two weeks ago, maybe, maybe a week earlier than that, it came to my attention that my episode on Gaia was the featured episode. I didn't know. I don't really, I haven't been back to Gaia for a couple months, so I don't know what the initial page looks like. But anyway, as a result of that, these are the people that I've been hearing from every day. Somebody who, you know, had just clicked into Lemuria or Telos, and all of a sudden they just felt that they needed to reach out to get more information. And so it begins again. They're in the UK, one's in Romania again, one's in Australia. And you know, we continue to find more of the tribe and they're at different levels of awareness, but they have something that brought them around and they're looking for the next piece of truth. I hadn't really, Dave and I had mentioned before that we have heard from members of the intelligence 
or a community that we've definitely heard from agents and that that communication seems to be more uh, not in terms of trying to squash any of this. They're really looking for their own truths. As I've said before, and I want to continue to underscore, they're really good people that work for the government. And they want to know the truth, too, because they're starting to go through their own levels of awareness. And they're looking for sources where they can figure out, well, a few days ago, I heard from them again. And we're just kind of comparing notes. What I understand about government participation in it, um, I didn't have an awareness of any of that until a few months ago. And these discussions have brought that into greater focus. That <laughs> it's not the government so much, although they've never been transparent with us ever. It's the outsourcing agencies that you know had these contracts on behalf of the government that are the ones that have um, collected this intel, shall we say? And what they do with it, you know, I can't really say is heart based. But as you can see, look how thin the veil's getting and how much interactions happening with higher realms. I see this is, I mean, this is whatever that energy is, it's their last ditch effort to try and hang on to whatever it is that they think that they've got. Their ideas about space, it, it, when I think about the types of interstellar conveyance methods I've seen, they've been, you know, light craft. And they don't move in the way that our propulsion systems have to work. So when we keep thinking about taking our human forms and casting them off into the space, it makes me chuckle. Our bodies aren't meant to do that in the first place. And our methods of thinking we need to get into space with the fuel and the way that we need to send rockets into space using that propulsion uh, makes me laugh. Because when you see their ships, they don't move like that. There is a greater comprehension of things coming. And this interaction between those beings and us is on the rise. I've been saying this for a while now. And I wasn't pressing this out to change anybody's mind. I'm just telling you, I've had extraordinary experiences for several years now. And it's time that I know I'm not the only one. There is still confusion about what it is. And that's what we offer here. You want to come and share your experiences? We're not talking heads telling you stories about others. The others that show up on these podcasts are those themselves that have had their own experiences and they come here to share with a crowd that they know won't judge them. I can't unsee or unexperience the things that have gotten me here, nor can Dave, nor can Paula, nor can any of the rest of the tribe. Uh, we all got to this level where we clearly see where we're going. And over the last week, although I've taken more time for myself than I ever have, really, knowledgeably, I think it was in preparation <clears throat> for more downloads because they've been regular. And whatever that's hatching to try and express it to the rest of you, I feel a sense of urgency that I've had felt before. It's new. It's back. Like it's time to get this information out there quicker by whatever ever methods necessary. And so um, we were never in this to gather tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of views or hits. This was about finding the right tribe and those that were ready for, you know, advancements. Um, but that takes a certain type of person who is ready and open and has resolved themselves to the things that they think that they know. And that's not the end of the story. So I'm going to take a breath. And um, Paula we haven't had you here for a while. 
So I think that you have something you're supposed to share with us, and I'm going to yield the mic. Okay, well, great to be here. Yeah, I think it was a couple of weeks. Well, I guess last week you had um, another event going on. I think I was I had another event going on as well. So it's great to be here. Do you have any? I I have some probably something to share. Do you have any insight on what I'm supposed to share, Lowell? No, I've been tending to my own flame, which has been the advice and kind of the theme for the last week or so. Okay. It's time for people, as selfish as this may sound, to start to spend time on themselves and mm -hmm. their own connection with something else. And believe me, the side effects about how your light expands and you blossom into others, that just happens. That doesn't need to be your intent. Is you know, I wish I could find more people that you know thought the same way I do. They just show up. But don't be afraid to explore what your intuition's trying to express. Right, right. Yeah, I I couldn't agree with you more. I feel like, um, well, the time to evolve and develop yourself is always in the now, right? Like that's always a good idea. Um, to your point with the things happening, um, you know, on a global scale, and then probably things going on in people's personal lives too, and their work probably is a mirror to the things that are happening on a bigger scale. So right now would be a wonderful time to develop, but um, I've been going back to my roots as to how I got on this journey in the first place. Cause to your point, Lowell and, you know, Dave, <clears throat> You can uh, have an experience, but there's two ways to look at it. Some people look at their experience as um, I'm unique and I am special and, you know, this is la la la. And there's another way to look at it as, <clears throat> excuse me, for me, where I was looking back and saying to myself, how did this trigger these experiences, my unique experiences I've had? It really triggered from my original desire many, many years ago. And I thought it was a casual desire, you know, kind of an idealistic desire that, um, you know, somebody in their 20s, their early 20s has. And I really, really wanted to be a part of creating better policies after the nuclear weapons were being dismantled in the 90s. I really felt like this is a magical time to be in politics, to be a part of something wonderful where we could invest in people, uh, invest in the development of humanity, improve everything, get good health care for everybody, um, good jobs for everybody. I thought this is our springboard. And my, my personal experience, well, I've had experiences before that, but my conscious experience of like really sitting down and saying in 2012, oh my God, since 1992, when I started on this journey of improvement, you know, being involved in campaigns, supporting candidates that I thought could create the good policy, by nine, by 2012, I thought there is no change. Everything's worse from 1992. Uh, the um, the the age where people pass had not increased; it had dropped over the years. Suicide was up. Drug abuse was up. The disparity between income of the haves and have-nots had increased. Um, environment had on decline, water sources, trash. I thought, my God, since 1990, 1992 to now, I thought we'd be on the upswing and we were on the decline. And I said, what the hell is going on? What the hell is going on? And I know now that it was my sincere intent and desire to understand why this was the case that told me you can't look to material reasons nor for solutions because you were talking, Lowell, you're solution-oriented. I am solution-oriented. 
And the solutions that I thought would work were not working. So it said, you know what? You released. You really are asking genuinely what's going on. We'll tell you, but you're going to have to go through some interesting experiences to see the higher light in things. And in that moment, I took a totally different trajectory. I'll be honest with you, it has not been an easy road because I went from a materialist to understanding things from a greater reality. I kind of was looking at life through a pinhole and all of a sudden it, it opened up into this massive, you know, at least up into like a beach ball vision, <laughs> like a pinhole to a beach ball. And it was a difficult adjustment and it was a difficult adjustment for the people around me. They thought I had gone nuts, but I asked for it. I said, I really want the solution. I will do whatever it takes to find that solution. And um, I didn't really know where it was going. You know, I think we wander around in the desert and, uh, continually having experiences, having visions, having downloads, not really knowing where it's taking you. But to your point, Lowell, I think it is all kind of coming to a head now. And I do see, I do see from a bigger perspective that, um, and I'm getting back into the materialist again, but it really comes into what are you doing day in and day out, most of the population. I know in our country, and I'm getting way back into my political science back roots, there's a hundred what is it, more than 100 million people, I think it said 180 million people that have frontline jobs that don't pay enough to pay your bills and you have to get a second job. Well, psychology will tell you, and of course I got you know a lot of training in psychology in college as well. How do you keep people from having a more expansive understanding of things? Keep them very damn busy with survival and they will never get into the headspace of an opportunity for an experience, higher knowledge, really see what's going on. And it's been very effective in keeping people um, looking at life through a pinhole the way I was and trying to sol solve solutions very frustratingly through a pinhole but we're kept there. And now I see there's an opportunity to pull people into a better economy. I actually have been reading a book by somebody, believe it or not, an academic that has definitely had spiritual downloads, Well, she, whether she realizes it or not, because her solution into providing better jobs for people includes higher pay and a little bit of open space to think of solutions on the job of which guess what's going to happen if you got some open space when is spirit going to come in when you least expect it she says and guess what um giving a little bit of slack at work where you can have some breathing room to think of better solutions at work is her idea but you know spirit's going to come in in that opportunity higher pay that makes you less stressed about you know, worrying about your kids staying at home alone and locking the doors and saying, call me if there's an emergency, not having any baby, you know, babysitters, not having health care is stressful when you're sick or your kid is sick and you don't have any health care. That all keeps you very tightly wound into a, a ball of angst where spirit cannot come in. But this solution actually produces profit for the company. This solution actually makes companies more profitable. And their argument is, if we pay more and we hire more people to offer Slack, we'll lose money and we won't be profitable. And she's made the argument that that's not the case. You will be more profitable in doing so. Now, Lowell, I'm going to go back a little ways. And I know that everything comes to us for a reason. There is nothing random in the world. And do you remember... Um, a while back, and I'm not going to name names, but there was a, a billionaire that had um, one of my friends who is a medium, a fellow medium like myself. She said, will you please um, meet with this um, institute 
that has been developed by this billionaire because they are interested in what mediums have to say about what's coming for humanity. Do they have any insights and maybe advice to help humanity in these very crisis-oriented times? Obviously, this billionaire had tapped in that there's something going on, but he wasn't sure, and he developed a consciousness institute to make these discoveries and, and used mediums, among other sources, to discover what was going on and how to help humanity. So, you know, met, but I, I didn't have any uh, desire to really, um, I didn't have a strong connection. I wasn't sure why, because I thought this person's on the right track, trying to be helpful and has the resources to do so. But there was no interest, very little interest on my part and very little interest on their part to hear what I had to say. And Lowell was with me on that and very, very not interested in what Lowell had to say either. And I thought, well, this is strange because this is really on the right track. I would imagine that this is really aligned resources with information to disseminate to people, very helpful. But then I looked at this person because this person became a billionaire, not through consciousness studies, <laughs> became a billionaire through another industry that is pretty much 100% frontline workers that are described as just as what I had said. Lots of hours, hard work, um, little appreciation, probably dif difficult hours to manage. And then I looked up this billionaire's rating as a CEO on Glassdoor and Indeed. And guess what? The rating of this person was not congruent with this person's desire to help humanity. Made the billions and then took the billions trying to find out the solution to humanity. Whereas right where he was standing. Your diamonds are always in your own backyard. How you treat your employees is your level of consciousness. And you, you know, this person's not receiving this information like me and Lowell are. And this is why. No, the nature of <clears throat> the part of the industry that he occupied was bargain basement accommodations. Right. Budget suites of America. Oh, you just, I don't know you just that spelled that's the beans an, on it. It's <laughs> no need to talk around it because it's okay. funny. Not funny. You talked mm -hmm. about how there are no coincidences. Mm -hmm. I have ties to the intelligence community that reached out to me. Found me on WhatsApp because I'm not all that hard to find if you really want to was at a level where he knew about what was going on at that institute because he was a director within the government mm -hmm. who was kind of li liaison with this institute. Yeah, They were given $22 million by the government to explore this idea of consciousness and that. And in the end, if you read through it carefully, you see that this is a recruiting mechanism, that this institute is looking for people that the government can use to assist with the connection to this higher realm. They've certainly had an awareness of it for a while, and they've been trying all ways to do that. Now they're just throwing out grants where, you know, you write a, a grant and a year later will tell you if you qualify well. That is not the nature of how this type of communication works. No. And so here is evidence. When I heard about this, because I wasn't aware of the Institute at the time, and I certainly didn't understand where a lot of their funding came from, not to say that this billionaire didn't have that kind of money to begin with, but he had the right connections. But you're right. His intent in the end was not to serve humanity. Mm -hmm. it, I don't want to reach out and speculate on what his reasons were, but I think it's safe to say it wasn't that. Yeah. And, you know, this person on some of the interviews I've witnessed, he will say, I have not had this experience. I have not had communication. I have never seen UFOs 
highly interested because his grandparents had an experience when he was a kid. That's how he became interested. But, you know, in truth, uh, communication comes because there is something that you are sincerely interested in understanding, knowing, helping. And you have to, your foundation has to be strong in that how you handle your, the energies that you're connected with. So you can't say, well, you know what, I'm going to behave this way, get my money. And then once I get the money from this entity where I kind of just am not seen uh, according to the people that work for him at Budget Suites, um, they're saying their experience at work is, is horrible. And to take that profit that's generated in that level of energy and to put it towards something else that you think is going to be of service, it's connected to negative. It just cannot produce the results that you desire. And even if you hear the truth or even if somebody opens up that's giving you what you want, you won't know it because you're not of the vibration to even recognize it. Well, that's really the point. You can chase these things all you want. I keep telling people, it's about your level of vibration. Your vibratory level is what allows you to experience things in higher realms. Raise your vibration and watch what appears around you. That is how this works. Absolutely. And you won't even hear it. You won't see it. You won't recognize it unless you are it first. Unless you are it. And then it... It'll open up anything and everything to you. You know, there's nothing that's not open to you. Um, but you have to be that which you want. You have to be it and you have to be it. And if you're not it, you have to ask for help. How can I improve myself? What can I do to be better? What can I do? And that that will be revealed to you as well. You know, be humble. You know, I make mistakes all the time. I fall off the truck all the time and I say, oh, geez, I see I fell off the truck. Can you help me get back on? What can I do, you know, to get back on? I'm quite humble and, uh, you know, meek and understanding that, you know, nobody is perfect and everybody has an opportunity to come up. But unfortunately, there's a lot of people that are trying to do good in the world that connect their energies to people like this because they've got so much star power. You know, and they don't see because this is again, this is my thing. I wanted something better for humanity, something better for my kids to grow up into. And I was nowhere near the whole UFO greater reality I, that had I, that wasn't anywhere in my consciousness at all. Yet, because I was open to any solution, they said, here is here's the solution. But in reality, I came all the way back around to the loop, which was, guess what? If you're going to take somebody's hours of their day, if they're going to be with you, if you're going to take 10 hours of their day each day, you better treat them well and you better pay them a living wage and you better give them the opportunity to have a life work balance and you better respect them. And, you know, that's just right up the alley with the people from inner earth. You know, they're the hours that the people spend at their various duties um, in Talos. It's done with respect, respect and honor to be able to serve their fellow uh, Talosians. And they're well, saying that's true. But that's, their that's all you need to be on Earth. Yeah. Is different. You know, long ago, <clears throat> there, I. For, <sighs> And I think it was a teenager when this thought came to me, I began to put into perspective what human beings basic needs are. Food, clothing, shelter, those are your basic needs. So what would the world be like if you didn't have to concern yourself with where those things were going to come from? If those things were provided by the collective, then, you know, what's, what would you spend your time on? You don't have to worry about, earning money because that's not how you get fed 
It wasn't how you clothed yourself. And it wasn't about, you know, the shelter that was going to be provided for you like everybody else. Those are the conditions in Telos. And from what I know of the areas in the earth, that's the nature of the law of one. You know, we're one right. step away from that mentality becoming back into our reality again. And we stop this idea of the them and us. There is no them and us. We're all connected and just have different things to experience along the way. You talked about your willingness to make mistakes. I remind you, mistakes are part of our journey. We came to learn lessons. So if you frame your mistakes into lessons that you have learned, and you are here to learn the lessons, and you'll repeat them until you get them learned, we stop thinking of ourselves as this vessel that can make mistakes. We're not. We're not that at all. We're here helping evolve everything. And if we see ourselves as connected to spirit or source, then it's easy to comprehend that I'm here to help it learn more about itself. The lessons I signed up for aren't lessons that I've learned yet, and it doesn't seem like anyone else has learned them either. So once I do, I've satisfied that little you know contribution to eight, uh, humanity it gets stored in my Akashic records and eventually blends with everybody else. Here is the nature of walking through duality in this third dimension and understanding the context of it all. That's the purpose for this whole earth experiment in the first place. Physicality, understanding it, loving it. We spent too much time now pointing at others to blame them for whatever instead of enjoying the beauty of Gaia and the planet in the amount of time that we have left. Because this construct right now in this dimension is on, a, 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 there's a stopwatch. There's a finite amount of time in this consciousness level before she's finished. And I'm not, I want to kind of illustrate this as though it's not all of a sudden we go from this to that in a snap of your fingers. We're through the process. We've been going through it for a while, and we're at the tail end. We're one solar influence away from that being enough catalyst for Earth to kick herself into her new level and stay there permanently. That's why we spend so much time on focusing on our own vibrations and telling you to do the same so that when we get to that moment, you're ready to experience new earth. We've been waiting for it to come. It's almost here. So all the things that we talk about are in preparation of that. So we continue to share these things with others. So hopefully it will resonate. And as I've seen that Gaia episode kind of started it all over again. Well, if I see that episode as a seed that was planted, that somewhere along the way, others were going to fade. And even Jody said, I was triggered by listening to your explanation of it. Something inside of me said, mm, when you mentioned what you were seeing and visiting. So we're to another level of Others kind of come into this awareness of things beyond ourselves, And it's not too late. Oh, yeah. it's, it's ready to flip. We're going to flip. Mm -hmm. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a flip too. It's not like, you know, it's going to be like we were here and we've been turning, but we haven't. You know how you, when you turn a pancake, you kind of do it slow and then you do it fast. <laughs> right. Right. You're kind of like, oh, boom. Okay, so I think we've been in the slow, it's turning, we know things are changing, and then all of a sudden we're just going to go really fast. It's going to accelerate very quickly. It's, and I can't do you not think that timelines haven't been accelerating quickly? I'm trying to oh, figure out where the whole last week went. Oh, all right. of a sudden, yeah. it's Saturday again, and I'm trying to figure out what happened this week that made the days go so fast. Oh. 
Yeah. Wow. Me too. And yeah, it's, it's been going very fast. And, uh, you know, I, I just want to, you know, if I could just, I don't know how people can get a hold of that episode. If you have to get a subscription to Gaia, I don't have my subscription to Gaia anymore, but I didn't, I don't have the time to sit and watch the way I used to. So but that's but, the, you know, that's, but I point. got it just when I needed to, because I think your yes, episode yeah. had just been, I got the Gaia subscription because a friend of mine had been added to the roster of the guy of people on the yoga side. And I can't tell you how comforting it is for me and all the other people because you shared, because you had the guts to share. And I don't know if it was difficult for you or not, but it's not <laughs> easy to share that sort of thing. I didn't Coming really know what I was stepping I into. Did. I know now looking back, that I would have been better served letting the experience assimilate more in order to really share it for what it was. Um, but I was curious, look, I was looking for touchstones too. I had never had this kind of experience before and damn it, there's gotta be somebody that can help me make sense of it. That's, That's right. why I started to share. Yeah. Not that I was looking for fame and fortune or anything like that, I had questions I need to have answered and who the hell else in my research has been inside Telos? No one I can find. No, no. Uh, uh. The only thing I had was, I can't tell you what a comfort it was because in my experience, I was just sitting and meditating, you know, um, as a medium, I was very used to connecting with people that had passed to the other side. And that was a certain sort of, vibration but in all honesty when the people from inner earth well it was actually a gentleman it felt like he was telling me as if it was in my ear it was a different experience than than the mediumship that I experienced with loved ones he was speaking directly to my in my ear and it was like hey and it's like he knew me but I didn't know him. like like I should know him but like we were, he was just informed, like, here, let me give you an update. He was giving me an update on something. And I'm like, wait a minute, I'm getting an update. I know you, who you are, but they didn't get what's going on. And he's like, okay, you know, uh, we're from Talos, uh, inner earth. Um, and it was very much a conversation in my ear. Like he was right there. And uh, look, first thing, we are light workers too. And we've come to let you know, and then directed me to Diane Robbins book, books, look to this, number one, number two, uh, also that Swedish woman, her book on, on uh, Agartha. Yes. I said, he said, get those, get those books. And then by the way, look to the congressional hearing from May of 2022. It is the beginning of um, all of this coming out with the UFOs or UAP thing. He said, this is the beginning. And I was like, dude, the government's talking about UFOs? I had no idea because like you, I'm not in the UFO community, nor am I still. I don't know anything about it. I'm not, I mean, I watch, I've watched a couple of films on UFOs that are uh, very science-based, you know, like the... Um, what is it? The Air's Phoenix Lights. Uh, that one is an interesting one. Things with Edgar Mitchell. He seems to be a common theme in, in a lot of these the films I've seen just, you know, since this time. But um, then told me, he goes, look, this is all going to come out big time now. And this shift is imminent. And uh, you need to write this book right now. Like, you cannot waste any time. And he's so, like, direct and insistent and pretty aggressive about his talking to me. And I thought, okay, I better get going on this, you know, but at the same time, I did not believe that it, this UFO stuff came out the way it did the following year, you know, in June of 2023, after I'd written my book, I'd released it in January. And then I thought, well, I'm just going to let this thing sit. I got to, <clears throat> I'm like you, I had to, I had to, incorporated all it just all happened so fast and it was overwhelming and I was frustrated and 
sort of like confused by this time, January of 2023, and I let it sit and simmer. And then sure enough, just like they said, a whole gangbuster of, uh, of stuff came out in June. Do you remember that with the David Grush stuff? And then that turned into more congressional hearings. And then I don't know where it's going now, but it's- It's never you know, gonna go any further than that because they can't pierce the transparency behind the entities that really had the knowledge and the benefit and the science um, from those experiences that we do know that. I don't know if we continue to refer to it as the government knows. Well, I don't even think that the government knows. I think it's in the hands of some people that it probably shouldn't be because if their intent was humane and for for the rest of us to benefit from uh, we wouldn't be still in the dark and mm -hmm. still wondering whether there are ufos in the sky in spite of the fact that almost any night that it's clear i can go out and document really within five minutes their existence oh, for and sure. furthermore their method of contact with us Dave certainly set the table and gave us the protocols on how to have this communication. And all I did was follow what Dave had suggested. He had success with it and his went to a different level, but I've had the same success. I understand. And it's not like I hadn't been given places to look in the sky because that's question number one, <laughs> where are you going to point, you know, your vision and, uh, I had seen this phenomenon in the a why out in space um, a few years ago. And so it settled me on whether this thing exists or not. What is really coming to our awareness now is that traffic that we're seeing out there in the sky is about to interact with us here. Well, mm -hmm. I say it about to. That interaction's taking place. And a lot of people aren't talking about it at all. Yeah. Because they don't want to sound ridiculous. Mm -hmm. uh, but those of us that have had other experiences, I understand what's going to happen with my inner earth colleagues and what's taking place in that realm. I had my eyes opened up to off planet traffic that's also coming this way. And a lot of that that is here that is unexplainable to us in some ways that somehow we've picked up on and can report on are, I think of them as fam trips. We have ambassadors coming from other places in the galaxy, understanding that Earth is almost to a place where she's going to welcome that type of extraterrestrial, ultra-terrestrial interactions so they're coming here to find out what earth is like in advance and dave can certainly speak about these beings that have been in his place <laughs> and have taken artifacts back with them it all makes sense to me we're not the only ones curious about what else is in the universe there have been lots of influences on the planet here already that we have just been too busy in our little three-dimensional lives to even have one lick of awareness about. Well, that's where the veil is thinning. And so it's just a matter of time before they show us themselves in form here. My interactions have been with light beings and orbs, and they make regular contact now. So I'm still waiting for the rest of you and your levels to evolve because that's where I thought I would see the recognizable differences in contact when I was told last year there's going to be an elevated level of contact off planet, in planet. I kept waiting to hear about stories from others. Well, it certainly didn't slow down my evolution because that has advanced here too. Yeah. Yeah. So much. And um, yeah, same, same with me. You know, I think I've shared those photos with you, um, just casually walking my dog and saying, you know, a little message in my ear saying, you know, point your phone to the sky and see what you capture with the video. Sure enough, you know, um, you know, I call them Merkabas, 
you know, I, I don't know if orbs and Merkabas are the same, but there's these little light balls that they travel in and then they evolve into more angelic shapes, right? And uh, they capture all of this on video with other people as well. This isn't anything new. Um, I think we look, I don't know why people look to the, the Pentagon or the government for this sort of information. There, there's no information there. Um, you have to kind of go within. And, you know, just as we discussed a couple of weeks ago, this it's going to get to the point, and this is how all of evolution has always been in the past as well. But get, like Gary Nolan was saying, he he says, look, there are people that are seers and they are perceivers. And we've done MRI examinations on many of these people's brains. And they do have a different brain. It's almost they have um, an, evo an evolved brain where there's this mass of very uh, tightly woven nerve data that exists in people who see or perceive and the people that don't see don't have this in their brains. It's shifting as a species. And I don't think it's like genetic. I think it's openness to it. And then the more open you are, then your body starts evolving to match your desire for more information. Okay, you want more information? We have to expand your senses and we have to create your brain. We have to add something to your brain so that you can evolve and see and experience this. And then you even see more and perceive more. He goes, well, and by the way, this higher brain function also helps you in higher sensory data in your whole life and everything and your ability to make things happen in your life. So the people that don't see and don't believe are going to be shifted off in, into a different species. They're not going to be the same. They're going to kind of stop their evolution and you know, as in my book, I mentioned, you know, what happened with the Neanderthals. And now anthropologists are saying, well, they probably died out because they simply were not able to coordinate and organize with one another. And that needed to happen. And they chose not to and they died away. So as we take that information from the past and apply it to the present, there are people that are willing to be open to receive information and to perceive more, want more, want to expand more, and then universe will give them the sensory um, operations needed to do so. And then the people that don't will die away, just like the Neanderthals and the Decinovans and all the rest. It's just a, a different type of, um, oh, decay yep it's just there decay. Yeah. there are things in lower vibrational densities that won't be able to vibrate at that next level and so um entropy is the word i was looking entropy. for it just entropies away and it, when you understand the nature of our human beings here our souls go on this body terminates and we're done with this but it was had always been a vessel just holding our soul until my soul gets to the next place so here is a place where we've been looking at this through the lens of earth's rise in consciousness and thinking that we tag along to it we have made our own unique sovereign choices our souls to participate first of all in this experiment but we're along a path of evolution, each and every one of us along the way as well. So we're trying to perfect the next level of our own evolutions. And, um, and there's it's a, a lot to It's take a choice. It. You still have individual choice to grow yes. and develop into this or not. I think the soul would like the individual too, but I think it gives it choice still. It recognizes your sovereignty. And if anything from within you screams that, it's your higher self that says, claim your freaking sovereignty back. It's where you, you'll you get, you'll have a further awareness as soon as you get to the next level of consciousness in earth. There will be a benefit and a respect for it again. Right now, 
in this density, there are individuals that still fly under the service to self banner and they're not giving up ground. You can see those whose focus is on their self and their own interests and their own accumulation of wealth, their consideration for everybody else, it ain't there. How those people snuck into leadership is beyond me. The fact that we choose the talking heads that we listen to and then take all of it as truth, man, many people have lost their way. And that's when I came into an awareness of I used to categorize, you know, the sentient humans as those that were aware of what's going on, not quite past the majority. That sense is growing. And then the unaware, who, you know, going through the exercises here and totally oblivious of the things that we know, there's a whole nother subset that I wasn't aware of, NPCs. These people that occupy space but aren't part of the unaware or the aware, they're just here. And so here is where a lot of that energy that's been stuck is just stuck until these entities, entities kind of entropy away. In my mind, this is that residue that we've been talking about, about that negative influence that have been here for a while. Here's the last stages of it plunked into, you know, these last carbon bodies before that is gone. That influence, that spirit is no longer here on the planet. But they're, I don't see them as a majority. They're a small fraction of what's going on on the planet because all of us really, we want what everybody else wants. And we want it from a place of love and unity and compassion. Um, it's just that not everybody is on that whistle train yet. Uh, but we're headed there. Those of us that are aware of it, that's what we get to look forward to in the future. And there's nothing but that when we get there. The rest of it that wants to, you know, still pick out and, you know, choose somebody else that's to blame for some condition, that's not even going to be in our field anymore. God, that's what I hang on to. That's what, whether I'm talking about it or not, that's the expectation that I know is coming. And it had always been in my field that it was going to happen within my lifespan here, this incarnation. Here's where I'm here to watch Earth slip into her new level of consciousness. And so did the rest of you. Pretty exciting. I think I can feel that energy building. It's really getting strong again. You know, I was feeling it and then it was like lull. And now it's really building. Yeah. 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 Pretty exciting. And it's exactly noon. Perfect timing. Perfect time. Oh, yeah. Well, then we will talk here unless you have a closing thought for us. No, that was the biggest kind of thing that I came to the realization with over the last couple of weeks. It's like, okay, understanding there's a bigger reality and then still applying some practical matters to some very big things that people deal with, you know, the majority of the population, and then moving that into something positive that is connected, connecting us to the people in Talos and the inner earth, improving our quality of life for everybody. And we're moving to that. That is how they live their life. They live their life consciously every minute of the day, not just when they get off of work and have time to meditate. It's in everything that they do. They're eating, their time with family, their time when they work. It's all conscious and it's all purposeful. And that's what that's what we're heading towards as well. Yeah, they have done a really wonderful job protecting that. Yeah. While the rest of us were here through this experiment, um, waiting for Earth goal to go through her own consciousness level. To that She's realization. on a cosmic cycle. So, um, And that's what that David Grush said. He said, you know what? You make this assumption they're extraterrestrial off planet, but really it's just possibly interdimensional and they were here long before us. And he points yeah. exactly 
to inner earth. That's exactly what we're pointing yeah. to as well. Um, it's good to hear others say that other than me, because it's very real. And the very reasons real. why these things are being brought into our awareness again is that, um, you know, if you look around at all the signs of the changes that are coming, these cataclysmic things that are happening, landslides and earthquakes and volcanic activity, that it's all on the rise. And then when you understand how our magnetic field around the earth has been deteriorating over time and that solar influence is on an uptick, mm -hmm. it's just a matter of time before the poles flip. Yeah. Now, <laughs> It coincides with Earth's rise in consciousness. So we're not going to be on the planet to suffer through catastrophes again because we already know where on the planet these predisposed places that are already at this higher frequency, we already know where they are and we tend to move to them. Some people have been in these areas before clearing them and rising the vibration in the areas, areas in preparations for others to follow. But it's not unlike what happened in Atlantis in Lemuria before. How do you think Telos got to be where Telos is? That's right. Well, during the time that that sinking took place, they looked for places in inner earth that they knew would survive these catastrophes. I'm convinced that this is why Telos was brought into a lot of people's awareness. They have no doubt that it exists. I'm here to remind you that if you've read some of these other books, you know that there are other inner earth cities as well. All right. over the planet have access mm -hmm. to it in other dimensions, and your awareness is being brought to it. So you know where these places are when this shift takes place soon. That's absolutely correct. Yeah. And um, that's absolutely correct. And it's really exciting. And it's probably been, I think it's 12,000 years, they said, since uh, Lumeria moved into Talos. So that's we are the overdue time of the for a now. shift, a pole shift. Um, it's the earth's had many of them. We don't talk about them much. Science doesn't talk about them much. Uh, but there's clear signs that this has happened before. And if we looked at the frequency and the average times, we are overdue. Absolutely. That probably explains why the North Pole has been moving as well as the South Pole. They've been moving magnetically. So yeah. here's where, you know, those other rabbit holes you went down to understand our cosmic, you know, make up our solar systems make up and our electromagnetic connections to all of that. When you understand how all that influence comes together, you'll understand what phase earth is in right now. And it'll make sense that you can see her shifting from this to this. All those things I point out are just evidence of the changes that are taking place and they were not man-made and we're not moving the magnetic field north we're not doing it. And there's evidence of you know, migratory patterns where animals just migrate um, intuitively based on these signals. You've seen these animals beached along um, coastlines and without we didn't understand why. And these are highly intelligent, sentient creatures. There is more going on under the surface where everything, all sentient life, is getting an upgrade getting while upgrade. Earth is. And it is oh. it is time. Uh, definitely, it says here, early civilizations began to form 12,000 years ago, including the Sumerians, Assyrians, Akkadians, Babylonians. So I'm guessing we're at the year of completion, 12,000 years. It's time. To your point, it's past time. Oh, um, yes. No. We've been we've been in it, in my opinion, since 2012 was the actual official beginning of the age of Aquarius. But it took us some time to bathe ourselves in this area here now for a while so that we sensed it. 
Yeah. Well, it's clear that lots of other people have shown up, especially, I mean, our focus last week was on 2016 and where that date triggered with me, triggered with Dave, triggered with lots of people that, was a big that have had this greater level of awareness. It all seemed to coincide about then. It makes sense. You know, we've been bathed in this elevated photon energy now for enough time for us to sense it or whatever upgrades we were going to get to interpret this higher level of full spectrum light coming our way. This isn't what we've been used to either. These higher frequencies are things that we have to adapt to, but that's part of what's been taking place inside of us cellularly as well. Absolutely. Uh, um, well, if we open this can of worms, we'll be here for another hour. And Yeah, uh, we won't do that. But I'll, I will mention <laughs> that at 2024 is how many years from 2012? 12. Yeah. Bingo. Yeah, yeah. Completion. Um, I have my opinion about where this cycle completes. And... Um, uh, most of you know what it is. I'm not going to push it out into the collective because I don't think a lot of them are ready for it. And I had to come to terms with that. I thought everybody should know the number. And that's not, the collective isn't ready. To them, we'll come to them in, in the right way, in the right time yes. and pin them. Like, yeah. you know, there's no broadcast needed on Instagram. People can receive Right, you know, when I think of how it came to me, <laughs> It came to me the way it was supposed to come to me. And um, it wasn't anything that we, this isn't an adult education class that you could take with some wisdom that you missed along the way. This has never been presented to us. And that's why those of us that have had these experiences are beginning to share them. Not that you are going to mirror this map that I was on. You have your own journey but man, you can see energies coincide, not journeys. You got in touch with a higher energy than this, and it woke up some other awareness that you now know has been stored away for a while. It's coming to your rescue um, for purposes that are unfolding. But all of the things that we have, this level of awareness that we're having is about to serve a purpose. And as humans, we've never had this before. So we really don't know how to understand it and interpret it yet. But holy cow, are things changing rapidly? That's, I referred to this sense of um, it's not anxiety things just are happening quick Mm. yeah accelerating Mm -hmm. yes well let's wrap it up okay wrap uh, it up great to talk to you lowell you too uh if anything else super comes up i'll let you know otherwise we'll see everybody here again next week so namaste namaste